Good evening. A mother has been found guilty of murder after stamping her 21-month-old daughter to death at home in Burton-on-Trent. Aisha Smith suffered a fatal collapse three weeks after social services in Derbyshire discussed taking her into care. Today, Catherine Smith from Nottingham was convicted of murder and her partner Matthew Rigby found guilty of causing or allowing the death of a child. After the case, the officer who investigated talked about the toddler's horrific injuries. Harrowing, horrible, um, heartbreaking. You've heard the um, injuries described. They were akin to those that are found in a, you know, a road traffic accident or if a child had fallen from height or as uh, Dr. Kolar gave in his evidence, a child that's been stamped on. Um, and when you listen to that and you put it into context, um, it's, it's horrifying. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, particularly upsetting for an investigative team, even more so for the family members. You know, they've had to sit, sit and listen to this, what's gone on. A former neighbour of the couple, who was a key prosecution witness, said the little girl was petrified of her mother. Naomi Pantel was speaking to Callum Watkinson, whose report contains details of Aisha's injuries. My daughter's not breathing. Right, OK, how old is your daughter? She's nearly two. Can you hear any air coming from her mouth? No, there's nothing. She's gone. She's gone. This call captures the panic of an abusive mother realising that she's gone too far. Catherine Smith has just beaten her daughter to death. And Matthew Rigby let it happen. A rip in the heart killed Aisha Smith. And the assault that caused it also broke three ribs, bruised both lungs, and drove her teeth through her own tongue. She was bubbly, the perfect child. She wasn't naughty, she wasn't a pain, she didn't even take much looking after. Once a friend of Catherine Smith's and four or five months a neighbour, Naomi Pantel was close to Aisha and shocked by the way her mother treated her. Then just a year old, she says AJ, as she was known, was seldom hugged or fed, often slapped and punched. Hand behind the head, smack, to the point where you can see the shape of a hand on a face or on a, on a bum or a legs. Obviously, I didn't know the degree to which it was happening, but I knew it was happening. And I did make threats to go to social services. I did say, I'm going, There's nothing, I'm, I'm not having this anymore, Kat. She's, she's losing weight, her hair's falling out, she's not eating. She's got a nappy rash to the point where her skin is peeling off when you take a nappy off her. After death, pathologists found bruising on AJ's face, chin, neck, chest, leg and back. When asked about these bruises, her mother said she'd got them falling off a potty. It's now clear she built a world of such lies around her daughter, in which the intimidation of a one-year-old was considered sport. AJ would just be minding her own business, watching TV, drinking some juice, doing whatever, and Cat or Matt would say, look at, look at this, watch this, and just stamp the feet. And AJ would obviously jump and be like, whoa, what's that? She was petrified. And they would laugh and think it was funny. But they, she was scared, that scared of her, of her own mum. That short and fearful life ended here on the 1st of May 2014 a ground floor flat in Burton-on-Trent, where Rigby and Smith moved the previous February. Neighbours heard them fighting often. Calls to the police were frequent. Um, can I have someone to my address, please? Is it in here? Yeah, stop it! Yeah? What's going on? The adults the argue while Aisha screams. A typical scene in a home where the cannabis was kept in the child's drinking cup and her needs were met rarely, if at all. It was like she was a, a little ghost walking around. They, they didn't really notice her until they wanted to notice her. They would just go about their lives as if they didn't have a child living there. They would be sm smoking weed, doing drugs, having people around drinking, arguing in front of her. Steve Crean was Smith's social worker for a year and visited her more than 20 times. A background check he did on Rigby revealed he was not a direct threat to AJ, 
who was the subject of a child protection plan before she was even born. In June 2013, she was removed from Smith, but returned to her mother in October. The following April, social workers made plans to remove her again, and the next day asked Smith to sign an agreement that she would keep Rigby away from her daughter. Smith refused to sign that agreement and killed AJ three weeks later. Those who loved her are now asking questions of the professionals involved in her life. Why didn't they weigh her? Why didn't they check for bruises? Mm. Why didn't they make sure she was eating? Why didn't they check the state of the flat that they were living in? There was cupboards ripped off, blood stains on the carpets, no toys, nothing in the fridge, drawers ripped off. AJ's bedroom door had a big hole in it covered by a, like a tea towel. If, if any social services walked into that place, they'd be like, no, no child's coming in here. On bail throughout this trial, Smith and Rigby have walked out of this court building for the last time. Remanded over the weekend, they will be jailed on Monday. AJ's father today called her murder pure evil and said no punishment was good enough. For the mother who killed her with such violence and the man who stood by and let her do it. Callum Watkinson, ITV News.